Amen. Through verse 16, rather. Praise God. All right. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. I'm going to start reading here at verse 12. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, beginning at verse 12, it says, And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seen Jesus, fell on his face, and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Amen. Praise God. Praise now if we go back up to verse 12. I want you to look at this. The Bible said there was a man who was full of leprosy. Praise God. Now leprosy was an infectious skin disease. Amen. And it could cause the tissue in the body to degenerate and cause it to deform. Praise God. I'm going to give you that definition one more time. Leprosy was an infectious skin disease that could cause the tissue to degenerate and deform the body. Back during this time, leprosy was a contagious disease to the point lepers could not live in the city. They would have to live outside of the walls of the city. So these people were what you call outcasts. Amen? Amen? They were outcasts. Hallelujah. Leprosy, back in this time, terrified humanity. Mm -hmm. It terrified humanity even as way back as 600 B.C., even up to the time where Jesus was manifested in the earth. Praise God. So leprosy back in these times was a pandemic. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Now we have pandemics today. But I want you to know there's nothing new under the sun. For the things that has been shall be. Amen? Amen? And this is why you see things happening the way they are today. But you got to know it's nothing new that has not happened already. Amen. Praise God. Now, in this hour in which we live, we know that there's a virus that has broke out throughout the world. And it has caused a panic on every continent on the face of the earth. Praise God. And I want you to know this is strategically designed by the shadow government. Every world leader knows what was going to happen before it happened. Come on. Now I know some of us, we in the dark concerning secret societies and Amen. How they are up under the thumb of the world bankers who control the economy just about on every continent on the face of the earth. Praise God. And I want you to know that one of the things that leaders are doing, amen, just about in every country is they are shutting down 
on just about everything. Shutting down hotels, shutting down restaurants, even though they're leaving the drive-thrus open, praise God. They're shutting down businesses and so forth. Why are they doing that? Because they don't want, amen, a certain amount, a group of people gathering together. Come on. They said it increases, amen, the spread of this virus. Come on. Amen. First it was no more than a thousand people gathering. Then they went down to 250 people. Then it went down to a hundred. Then it went down to 50 and now they're talking about 10. Come on. Amen. Praise God. So in other words, you should distance yourself socially from being around a certain amount of people because they say it increases the risk of you getting the virus. Now let me say this to you folks that are born again Christian. Now I want everybody to look at Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There was a pandemic even during his day and the text tells us here in verse 12 it said there was a man full of leprosy who seen Jesus fell on his face and besought him and said Lord will thou make me clean and watch this in verse 13 it says and he speaking of Jesus Christ put forth his hand and touched him oh my God did y'all see that Jesus touched a man who had leprosy. Now, mind you, leprosy was contagious. Come on. Now, you don't see Jesus, amen, did, amen, dissocializing himself from these people who had, amen, was infected with a disease. Come on. Praise God. Let me tell you something. The reason why Jesus touched him, because he has something in him where the disease could not stand in his presence. The power of God was in him. Come on. Hallelujah. Now watch this. See, we as the blood ball church, we live beneath our privileges today. Yes, we do. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Didn't he tell us over in Luke chapter 10, verse 19 and 20? He said, Behold, I give you power. And he said, Nothing by any means shall hurt you. Come on. Didn't Jesus say over in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18? He said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. And one of them is, If you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt. Come on. You want to know what that is? It's because of the anointing of God that is working in the life of the believer. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. When Jesus touched him, now watch this. There should be one saint that's afraid to touch anybody that got a virus. I don't care if they got the coronavirus. I don't care if they got AIDS. I don't care sickness or disease they got. Come on, we come it by the blood. And you should not be afraid to lay hands and speak a word of life and deliverance in the lives of somebody who needs the touch of God. Come on, somebody. Why are the Holy Ghost people in here? Hallelujah. I believe every believer should be like his Lord. 
You gotta understand, God know how to protect his people. Yes, he knows how to protect his people. Come on. Amen. Now, the coronavirus is a man-made virus that has been unleashed upon the public. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Come on. Amen. And you think that God can protect you as a child of God? when God began to use Moses to inflict Egypt with plagues. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. Huh? Amen. He inflicted Egypt with plagues. Now remember the children of Israel were in bondage to the Egyptian for over 400 years, but the time had come where God was going to deliver them from up under Pharaoh. Come on. And God told Moses, I, I want you to go and stand in front of Pharaoh's face and tell him, let my people go. And of course, Moses did that, amen, a few times and Pharaoh refused to let his people to use that rod, that staff, amen, to bring about plagues in Egypt. And did you not know why the plagues were breaking out in Egypt? None of them touched his people. Come on. God protected his people. Come on. Just like he protected Daniel when he was in the lion's den. The Bible said he said, and they will lock the jaws of the hungry lions. Come on. He sent an angel and he delivered the three Hebrew men from the burning fiery furnace. And if God is able to protect them, is he not able to protect you? Come on. Now, folks, I want you to miss the point now because you got to live holy. See, this is the part we leave it out. We'll just say God will protect us, but ain't living a nickel worth of nothing. Compromising your faith. Come on, you're compromising. Hallelujah. And you think God will protect you when you're stepping outside of his will? God is never obligated to protect any of us when we are outside of his will. Come on. You better think about that now. You better think about that, praise God. Hallelujah. God is not obligated to protect nobody when we are outside of his will. But he did tell us, if you're hearken to obey the commandments of the Lord, all them curses won't come upon you. He'll protect you. He'll lay them all from you. Now, this coronavirus, praise God, has created what you call chaos. Uh -huh. hmm? And one of the things that these New World Order people have always done was create chaos. Hmm? They create chaos on purpose. And then they jump on the other side and come up with a solution and save you from the chaos they created. It's an old Freemasonry term called ordo ad chaos, which means order out of chaos. They create the chaos, come up with the solution, and establish order. Huh? They become your savior from the chaos You understand?
understand what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. And this is not happening because it's just broke out and, you know, we're not able to contain it. Praise God. This was strategically done because what people keep forgetting is that we are headed for world government. Come on. Praise God. With all the shutdown, it could possibly, amen, break the economy. Huh? If they wanted to, praise God, once this so-called pandemic is over, amen, the dollar may not, I didn't say it was, it may not be any good, and now they can usher in a new economic system. And we know the Bible talks about a new economic system, praise God, in the last days. We all know it as the mark of the beast, praise God, in Revelation chapter 13. Amen. And everything is on that chip mark. Come on, your name, your address, your phone number, your medical records, your bank account. It seems like a wonderful idea. Everything right there. You can never lose it, praise God. They'll sell it to you, praise God. Just like a, a car salesman trying to sell you a lemon. Amen. Trying to sell you a car, but he know it's a lemon, praise God. They got it running pretty good. But to the point, if you test it out, it'll run good. Amen. And when you buy it and drive off the lot, it rides good. Until you got three blocks away in the beginning of the cut, cut. Now, I know many of us don't know they've been having it that long, but they've been having it that long. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. And they test it. People have put it in their hand and tested it. Come on. In grocery stores. Come on. Private clubs. Corporations. They tested it and it works. See, before you put anything out of the market, it has to go through. Praise God. And they have their test subjects to test it, praise God. And it's almost ready to be passed to the world. And the majority of people that you see every day will take it. Many people in the church will take it. Hmm? Yeah. Even these leaders in churches will tell their congregation that, you know, this is a good idea. This is not really the mark that the Bible talked about. We all need to go and take it. And the Bible talked about in Revelation how the woman rode the beast. That woman is the one world church riding the beast, the one world government. Come on. Praise God. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's why you got to understand there are so many false leaders in our churches. False prophets, false apostles, false pastors. Are you listening to me? That's why you can't believe everything because they got a title in front of it. And because they can tune it up, praise God, and make your head shift back and forth like a reed shaking in the wind. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Are you getting this? Yeah, we headed for a cashless society. You won't be pulling no more money out your pocket. Yeah, all of that's coming. They create the chaos and then they establish order. Come on. Amen. Yeah, we headed for a cashless society. I know y'all don't think this is going to happen, but it's going to happen. How do you know it's going to happen, Pastor Walker? Because the Bible says it. Because God spoke it out of his mouth. Come on. God can see the end from the beginning. And he already declared what shall be. Come on. And you're going to see it for yourself if you're still alive on the face of the earth. 
And that's why it's important you prepare for it. Amen. Come on. Amen. Now Jesus touched the lepers. He didn't run from them. He didn't hesitate to touch them. So when you're walking in the anointing, you're not afraid. Amen. You're not afraid. Amen. Because you have power in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that Holy Ghost must be working in you. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise God. You got to do more than speak in tongues. Come on. That Holy Ghost was given to you to put that flesh under subjection. Come on, so you can glorify God in this body. Not just so you can jabber in tongues and you think you got something. You understand? Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, you will speak in heavenly tongues, but it don't stop there. You're going to get, you're going to have power to resist the flesh and all Because you didn't know the truth. Right. 
so you weren't able to discern what was right from what was wrong. Huh? You just believed what you were doing, what you were practicing was the truth when it was not the truth at all. That's why it's important to know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Come on. Are you hearing me? Jesus touched the lips. He didn't say, I ain't touching you. <laughs> but look at these folks calling themselves Christian today. Mm -hmm. And I come to tell you, God is beginning to separate the wheat from the tail. Mm -hmm. All these phony balonies in the church, you about to see that them people ain't Christian, never have been a Christian at all. They've been faking the funk, they've been lying, they've been pretending the whole time. Because the Bible said he's going to separate the wheat from the tear. He said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. Don't you know wheat and tear look similar? They look almost alike. To, almost to the point you can't even tell the difference. Jesus said, let them grow together. When I come, I'm going to do the separate. He's going to show you who the real saints are and who the hypocrites are that's been faking the whole time in the church. And God has a way of separating the wheat from the tent. So we can pretend all day. But I come to tell you that if we follow in Jesus, we should not have the spirit of fear. Isn't that what he told us? Second Timothy yeah. chapter 1 verse 7 God has not given us the spirit of fear but of what? Love, power and of a sound mind. Why are people in the church so fearful? A plague break out. Oh. Hmm? You live in holy what did God say in Deuteronomy 28? Now he said this concerning, amen, the children of Israel. Praise God. But I believe it also is, is applicable for us today. He said, if you hearken to obey my voice, blessing is going to take you. But if you don't hearken to obey my voice, curses are going to overtake you. He said, whatever you set your hand to do will not prosper. Hallelujah. God ain't going to let it prosper. Huh? Amen. You know why? Because you're under a curse. Hello. Amen. God can protect his people. Yes, he can. Huh? Amen. He can protect his people. And have you noticed, people ain't never washed their hands this much in their life. These folk barely wash their hands. Fingernails be all dirty. And they think nobody sees that. Come on. These folks today ain't never washed their hands or their face this much in their whole life. But, you know, to... It decrease the risk of me getting it. Wash your hands a whole lot. You should be washing your hands a whole lot anyway. That's just good hygiene. Not washing your hands because that's so I won't get it. And if, you know, when it pass over, then back to norm, back to being filthy. Hello. Praise God. Is there anything good that can come out of the coronavirus? Yes. It got them folk washing their hands and their face. These folk don't wash up at all today. Come on. They rubbed across their face a hundred times and still won't go wash their face and then wash their hands last. Huh? Jesus of Nazareth. And that's just the truth. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Does this make sense? Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Jesus touched the leper. And the Bible says the leprosy departed from him. Huh? Amen. See, that was the power of God. Hmm? That was the power of God. Hallelujah. That sickness had to go. Huh? See, the anointing was working strong in his life. So you got to understand, folks, if the anointing is going to work in your life, you have to be broken. Yes. Flesh has to die. Yes. Come on. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you can have the Holy Ghost speaking tongue, but it's not really moving in your life like it should because you, that, that flesh is in the way. Huh? Amen. That flesh is in the way. You need to be broken. Hmm? That's why God takes us through things. And he calls us to fast things. Because we must go through a period of brokenness so the flesh will never interfere from the power of God moving through your life. Amen. Come on. Bible says in the book of Acts. Uh -uh. Bible says in the book of Acts. Watch this now. Bible says there were many people that were sick. And the Bible says Peter, when he just walked by him, his shadow just touched him. And the people were healed. Now you understand, Peter was a man of fasting and prayer. He had the anointing of God. Come on. He was one of the ones that was up in the upper room. Huh? When the Holy Ghost fell on about 120, the Bible said, he was one of the ones that was up there. But you gotta remember, Peter was a man of prayer and fasting. Praise God. Amen. The Bible said he just walked past them. There were so many of them in the street. And his shadow just touched them. Demons were being cast out. People were being healed. See, I believe God wants to move like that even in his last day. Come on. We know there ain't going to be some worldwide revival before the coming of Christ. But that does not matter the fact that God wants to demonstrate his power amongst his people even in these last and even days. You understand? Come on. Jesus touched the lepers. He didn't shy away from them. He did not distance himself from them to keep from having to touch them because he was afraid of being infected. Come on. Saints of God should never have that fear. Amen. This is why holiness is so important. Amen. This is why walking upright before God is so important. There are benefits that come with it. Hallelujah. Now when you shucking and jiving, you should be scared. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You should be afraid when you shucking and jiving. Yeah. When you contend and praise God, you should be afraid. Does that make sense? Yeah. Glory to God. You shouldn't be afraid of your shucking and jiving because you just might get it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, let me go ahead and give you this scripture and then I'm done for tonight. In the book of Acts chapter 5, you can't be scared. Come on. You can't be stirred, people. Come on. You can't be stirred. Hello. We are the blood ball church. Hallelujah. And God didn't give us the spirit of fear. He gave us power. Amen. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, he said, nothing by any means shall hurt you. You shouldn't be afraid. 
Hallelujah. You only fear one thing and one thing only. Jesus said, fear Now y'all 
this. When they say there's no cure, you're supposed to say the devil's a lie. Because Jesus heals from our sicknesses and diseases, praise God. And I want you to know this, that any time they manufacture a virus, praise God, always know they always make a vaccine too, but they never make it public for the people. They never make it public for the people. They make you think there is no vaccine for it when they have it. Anytime they, they create these things, they always make a vaccine to it. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. You better hear me. So we believe anything the media says. We look to the media to tell us the news. And they're only telling you half the news. They're telling you, praise God, what the powers that be that own them tell them to tell you. Because if you really know what the real news was, it'll blow your mind. The things that are going on behind the scene plotting against every citizen on the face of the earth to bring us on the world government. And many of us, they will kill because they want to get the earth down to a certain amount of people because they say there's too many people. That's always been the goal of the global elite. Amen. I'm telling you folks, I'm telling you, better listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. And I don't boast in my flesh, I boast in God. Praise his holy name. But you can't believe everything you hear. Everything you hear on TV. Well, I just want to watch the news. Look at you. Hallelujah. You don't even listen to the news that's written in scripture. Look at all this news. Come on, we don't even listen to that news. Come on. And we like to listen to the news on, on the television just to, just to watch television. Because we ain't got nothing else to do. Huh? God let all kind of things happen to keep the saints busy. Yeah. Look at all the people that need prayer yeah. and need healing and need yeah. demons cast out. Look at all the folks that are hungry. And those that are thirsty and those that are in prison and in nursing homes. Look at all the things that keep happening within your family. It ain't just about your family. And that's the only time you get proactive. Praise God. But then when nothing's happening in your family, you turn the proactive off and you go dormant. It's all kind of stuff to do to keep the saints busy. He said in the word. He said, to stay busy. But you never get so busy even doing ministry work you forget to get on your knees. Come on. You forget to get on your knees. You forget to worship. You forget to study the scriptures. Your devotion is always first. Your relationship with God is always first. Nothing gets in the way of that. That's why your life, your home should be so structured. You don't let nothing get in the way of your consecration. Because the devil will try to wreck your life to the point your whole life is out of order, your home out of order. You ain't got no time for prayer, for Bible study. Maybe everything gets in your way. Oh, I can't come to church today. Uh, it's always some excuse. Praise God. You understand? that quick. 
ain't won nobody, ain't talked to nobody. Come on, ain't got nobody delivered. Come on. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. See, we don't want to hear stuff like this, but it's the truth. And look at all that time the devil stole from you. He's still in time. Your time is ticking. It's ticking away. It's ticking. And for you know it, you're 70 years old. Before you decide to wake up. And your beard is gray. Your wrinkles. You can't hardly walk. Huh? Somebody got to feed you and change your pamper. Huh? That's why the Bible says, remember thy creator in the days of your youth. So when you get old and can barely move, you can hardly do nothing. Then you begin to reflect back in your mind, I wish yeah. I could do this. Yeah. But now it's too late. Unless God supernaturally heal you and renew your youth as the eagle, it's a little too late for you. Amen. You wasted all your time and years mm -hmm. and you was not doing the will of God. You went to church, but you was not doing the will of God. You did some things right, but you left the weightier matters undone. And you will be lost for eternity. God's people are supposed to be proactive, not inactive. Can I say that one more time? 